Hi, my name is Frank Barrett Mills, the executive chef for a number of the brands here at the Mick. Look forward to working with you. Mixers come with all kinds of different speeds. This one has a three speed, high, low, and medium. Mixing dough should always be done on low speeds for a number of reasons. First of all, it's a lot of bulk and it puts load on the unit. Secondarily, you're trying to develop the glutens in the dough. You're not trying to beat it up. So as you're pulling it slowly, you're developing the glutens and getting what you want out of your dough. And thirdly, on a high speed, it has a tendency to blow dust and blow flour all over the place. There's no need for it. Doughs like slow and go, slow and go. The speed controls on these are there for a reason. We've said that the low is for your doughs. The medium is for things like cakes, muffins, anything that's a light dough, medium speed to get some air into them and allow them to rise nicely. It would be a lighter batter, as I say, cake, muffins and alike. The high speed is for whipping products to get a lot of air in them, like whipped cream, like mashed potatoes, which are great at high speed, uh, doing meringues, beautiful with a high speed. So anything light that you want to puff a lot of air in, high speed, medium, your cake batters, your muffin batters, and of course low is, as we said, the doughs. Overfilling a standing mixer is crazy for many reasons. First of all, product flowing over. If it's over full and you turn it on, let's say you're working at the high speed and you have a very liquidy product and you filled it up three quarters of the way. You won't have three quarters very quickly. You'll have half because the rest of it will be on the floor. Uh, with dough products, putting no higher than the line allows the unit to work correctly. You overload it. You're going to tax the motor. You're going to tax the gears. The life of unit, your unit will be shorter than handling it correctly. So do two loads rather than one. Doesn't take very long and the savings, not only on your equipment, but from what you dumped on the floor by not planning it correctly, will make it valuable for you. There are two or three main reasons why you don't add frozen product to a mixer. And the first one is you put block products, let's say six, eight inch frozen product into this. You put a number of them in, it's like ball bearings. They're gonna be bouncing around inside that. It could possibly jam your motor and burn it out but more importantly, it's a projectile at a certain point. A six inch frozen device, material, whatever it is, can be thrown out of this unit, bend this rail with no problem at all. You don't put hard, large objects frozen in this unit. If you put a regular dough, let's say you took 15 pounds of dough and you wanted to mix it up and you put it in there frozen. First of all, you can't get the mixer blade down through it. So you're gonna put it up on the side and put the mixer blade in there. Well, the kick is it's not going to mix it. It's just going to slam it around. And at a certain point, it's not going to do anything for you. Let it defrost. Leave it in the bowl, pull the bowl off, let it defrost, and then do it. There is no physical way to drive the mixer through a frozen product to get in the correct position to mix that product. Physically impossible. And never, never mind motor damage, product damage, or employee damage by doing something as foolish as that.